Good morning to everybody. How are you guys doing this morning? It is, what time is it? It is 7.15 in the morning. The snow just ended about an hour ago, but I wanted to have enough light to go out and be able to do this. So how's everyone doing this morning? Please like and subscribe, first things first. Um, yeah, very tired, but that's okay. I love doing these videos, so. Um, who needs sleep? You can sleep when you're dead, right? So, I hope that's not a thing, a sign of things to come, what I just said. But anyway, yes, it is Monday, February 13th, 2023. Temperature is 34 degrees. Oh, I got the hiccups in Big Bear Lake, California. Oh. Because it's just that beautiful time of the day where the sun's just popping over the mountain. We're gonna do another lake drive. I'm gonna go around the lake. Um, let's see here. I wonder. Oh, there we go. There's my Apple CarPlay. It wasn't working, so I had to restart my phone, and that actually worked. That actually worked. Look at the skies. The skies are beautiful. It's 34 degrees. We got maybe about a tenth of an inch of snow. We did not get much. But I'm looking forward to seeing what we got in the snowiest part of town. Once again, good morning to all my favorite people in the world. Pothole. Ding, ding. The tank thing. So I'm hoping we can do this video in under 35 minutes, but we shall see. We shall see. This is what I want to show you guys. We got the map up and still zoomed in a bit, which is great. Wow, guys, we're, I'm so tired I even forgot to drive through the village. That should tell you guys how tired I am. But there's hardly any snow. All this snow, you guys, will be gone as soon as the sun really pops up here. And it's popping up. I've got the windshield wipers going. Another reason we're going this way early, besides getting a nice view of the of the sun over the lake, is this is the way the traffic typically comes into town, the opposite direction that we're driving. So I wanted to kind of avoid that. you guys go back to the uh, let's see last night's first video you'll be able to tell that there's no snow anywhere so you, you can see we got some snow if you look at the rooftops you can really tell 
but I mean, it's nothing. I mean, literally nothing. The end of your fingernail that needs to be trimmed wouldn't even be deep enough to, to penetrate that. I mean, it, it, the opposite of what I just see, it's really early. see out that window, but it kind of looks cool. Looks like the window has a bunch of, uh, a bunch of problems. Temperature just fell to 33 degrees. These next couple nights, I think starting tomorrow night, um, temperature is supposed to get down into the single digits. So the wife and I need to bring in our chickens. I always thought it was the weirdest thing that people owned chickens. Unless you lived on a farm, then it was normal for me, but like, where I grew up, you never saw that. In Newport Beach, never, ever saw anybody owning chickens. And my wife got four chickens and thought it was the weirdest thing. It's like, what is going on here? Are we in the twilight zone? And I fell in love with the chickens. They are so sweet. They are so sweet. Don't know why I brought up the chickens, but oh yeah, because it's gonna be really cold in a couple nights. I didn't realize how hardy chickens are though when it comes to cold weather. Holy cow, they can they can withstand a whole bunch, but like uh I love animals. I love animals almost more than I love humans because they're so innocent, you know. And I don't want our chickens to suffer, <laughs> even though it it says uh, that they can they can withstand temps even down below zero. Different breeds can withstand different temps, but all chickens, for the most part, can like will have no problem with the temperatures in the teens. And that shocked me. It really did shock me. As far as I'm concerned, I'm I'm never gonna allow us to take that risk. Anytime we get temperatures below 20 degrees. I make the chickens come inside. Of course they stay inside of a cage when they come inside. But I even feel bad for them being out there when it's 20 degrees, but my wife, she she reassures me, don't worry, it's totally fine, they're totally fine. And she loves animals. So I, I would never think anything uh, that she doesn't care or anything like that, because she loves animals so much. But did you guys know the chickens can can live in like extreme cold like that? I've done a lot of research, so the, the only thing I'm concerned about is uh, them getting frostbite from the wet weather and being out in the cold at the same time. We don't have any like heat lamp out there because I'm worried that we're gonna burn the place down. Which is another reason on the on the colder nights I always bring them in. What do you guys think? Do we have any chicken owners here? As I said, I thought I thought we chicken owners were the weirdest people to own chickens. What was wrong with us? And now that I have my own, I like I'm so in love with them. <laughs> what do you guys think? about chickens we are on our way to the big bear dam right now as you can see they got a little more snow over here but maybe they got like an eighth of an inch over here <laughs> we got a tenth of an inch they still got nothing over here you can look at the, these guardrails and just 
different objects to try to gauge how much snow has fallen. And it's really not much at all. For a couple minutes after the video I did in the, in the middle of the night, it really, like for, for about 15 minutes, it was coming down those big, beautiful snowflakes that I love so much. lake view. I love this part of the drive. I really do. Being right on the lake this whole time. So you just saw that sign we passed commemorating a lieutenant. So on Highway 38, I've noticed signs that say Jeremiah McKay in honor of Jeremiah McKay. In uh, and what I learned last night, which I've known a lot about the Christopher Dorner thing, or two nights ago, is that Jeremiah McKay was one of the officers that he, he shot and killed in his final gasp at Seven Oaks. I think it was Seven Oaks. His final gasp, Jeremiah McKay, Officer Jeremiah McKay was the last one killed from Christopher Dorner. That is pretty. Once again, I, I can't believe that we had a manhunt up here for I wasn't up here yet. It was two years before I moved up here, but I was living in uh, in the Irvine area, which is where he took his first two two victims. And I guess his first two victims were uh, one of them was the daughter of one of the officers that was testifying against him for the most part, and he decided to go take his his innocent daughter's life and his innocent daughter's boyfriend. And it was in Irvine, literally like two two condo complexes down from where I lived. It was a big, big, big story. You know what? I wasn't living at that condo complex at the time. I was actually, man, I am exhausted. I was in Redlands living at my brother's house while he was gone for a while. Kind of taking care of the place and growing a bunch of herbs and spices and stuff. It was really cool growing all those tomatoes and stuff like that. It was awesome. <laughs> and it really was tomatoes, you guys. Tomatoes and peppers and just super, super, super awesome stuff. I, I never knew that I had that in me. But yeah, but I was, I was at his place while this was all going down up here in this mountain range. And I, and I remember seeing the smoke from, from the fire that the officers caused in the house that Christopher Dorner was holding himself up in, um, shooting just indiscriminately at cops. God bless the cops, man. I'm a huge, huge cop supporter. If I wasn't such a coward, I would be a cop. cops out there. My favorite house again, right on the corner. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. <coughs> okay, we're coming up to the 15 minute point of this video and we are we're gonna be entering Fawnskin a couple seconds after that. So that's to tell you that from Moon Ridge Road, heading towards the dam to get into the Fawnskin area, as we pass the Eagle Habitat here, 
um, should only take you 15 minutes without any traffic. This is where we're at. What a beautiful sight. Look at that. Look at that lake. Temperature's 33, 733 in the morning. Okay, we're going the speed limit 40. Now we're going, slowing it down to 25. We're in Fonskin now, 15 and a half minutes to get here. So one thing you need to know, I always tell you guys, because uh, obviously this is a small town and when we don't have the winter season going on and skiing and stuff like that, yes, we have the lake, which generates income for the town as well, but nothing like our winter season. Our town does a lot of ticketing, a lot of speeding tickets, you guys. So especially in these little towns, for the love of everything sacred, please just drive slow. Go the speed limit. Because these towns are so small that you'll be through it in a heartbeat. And I'm not saying that when you're through it, start speeding up again, but just, you know, don't add another few hundred dollars to your vacation or any points to your driver's license. That's just not fun. San Gorgonio has engulfed in the clouds back there, that tall mountain behind our ski resorts. I've always wondered why they haven't put a ski resort up there and a little town up there. I've seen pictures and videos of the summit up there and a lot of that mountain range because I was obsessed like I am doing these videos. And guys, there is so much room up there. I mean, there is so much room. And the top is like a mesa in a lot of places. So you could, I mean, and guys, you want to talk about a lot of snow, like, like you get mammoth type snow up there. Of course, I don't think they have <clears throat> like six to 800 inches like they have already this season, but um, they probably at least have 300 inches up there, I would think. It's 11,555 feet at the summit of San Gorgonio. And San Gorgonio is a big reason why Big Bear does not get a lot of snow. Because that mountain just engulfs all the storms selfishly, just doesn't want to share it with us. Gets all the snow, and then what's left hits us. Freaking San Gorgonio, you're such a selfish bastard. so pretty my gosh look at the sun reflecting off the lake over there this is such a pretty time of day those clouds are definitely helping the pretty cause out right now once again good morning to you all don't hesitate to send me comments you guys I love hearing from you guys I've been told that I'm definitely not like other youtubers and and people really appreciate that I respond and for those of you who have never sent me any comments yet, send me a comment, ask me a question, and you'll see that I actually like, I don't copy and paste. I leave an individual personalized response for everybody. Because you all deserve it. <laughs> it's you guys that I look forward to making these. You guys are why I look forward to making these videos. We are going a little bit faster, we're going 31 and a 25, so we need to slow down. So yeah, let's take, take a look at where we're at in accordance to where the lake is. We're right here, right alongside the lake. Temperature 33 and 738. Now we're exiting Fonskin. B-E-A, beautiful. And then you guys also, um, I was hoping, I know it's late in the video to be mentioning this, but one of our friends on this channel, her name is Melinda. I believe her last name is Tillery. 
I believe. Um, I got a message from her son. As I said, they're friends of this channel. Got a message of from her son a few days ago that she passed away. And she's been a, a, a friend of ours here for a long time. And so I was not doing well hearing about that. And then a couple days later, I got a message that she's she didn't pass away from him. And then they're at the hospital, but she was kind of in like a vegetative state. And so I, I was just really confused, but so grateful, so grateful that... Obviously, I don't want anyone to be in a vegetative state, but got even better news yesterday. They sent me another message saying that she actually opened her eyes and she doesn't know who she is or what's going on, but she's she's there. And, you know, I've, I've been one who's always been skeptical in prayer and religion and stuff like that. I've always admired religious people, though, a ton. Because religious people, for the most part, most of them are just trying to be good people, trying to become better people, and just help their neighbor. Just, you know, just trying to be good people, whether it's real or not, from some, from some folks, who cares? You know, as long as you're, you know, trying, trying to do something to be a better person, then that's a wonderful thing. And I've always, always admired religious people tremendously. But... I was praying a lot because my wife's very, very spiritual and very religious and I was praying for them a lot and as I said, we got a great message that she's actually, she she opened her eyes and uh, once again, she doesn't know who she is or where she is or, or anything like that, but I mean, I'm trying to find any reason to give faith a go in my life. And this is something else that has been kind of what I would consider a miracle. And I just hope that my continued prayers can help her even more. Trust me, I'm not saying that my prayers helped her. But you never know. And why not think positively like that and keep a positive attitude like that? And as I said, I have so much respect for for uh, religious people, doesn't matter what you believe. I've been mostly agnostic my whole life. Even though I'm technically 48% Ashkenazi Jew, and we've always celebrated Christmas in my family, even though, as I said, I'm 48% Ashkenazi, according to my 23andMe DNA. But, um, yeah, I've, I've been agnostic. Um, and my understanding of that is just like, you know, since I just don't know enough or, or like have enough evidence, then it's, it's, it's hard for me to, you know, believe it different from an atheist. Different from an atheist. I've always believed that atheism is like people who don't want to believe in a religion but it's kind of a religion on its own <laughs> you know so it's, it's kind of an oxymoron but I have a lot of respect for the religious population out there so much you guys and I just uh, I just wish that I could live that type of a life because I know we're all afraid of death at least I'll speak for myself I'm afraid of death and I don't want to just whittle away into dust to dust, ashes to ashes and dust to dust once I pass on. That's not a, that's not a fun thought, you guys. That's really not a fun thought. It would be nice to know that for real, I am going to be going to, to be with my family that has moved on and all my pets that have moved on. I used to always believe that's kind of a pie in the sky kind of thought, but you know, the, the, the more that I've learned about quantum physics over the years and law of attraction and stuff like that, it's been proving to me more and more that there has to be something out there. There has to be a power greater than ourselves, um, whether it's in human form or not, you know, it doesn't matter to me, but 
to believe in something greater than than yourself takes a lot of courage. Um, and as I said, I see a lot of people out there who who aren't aren't afraid to pass on. They almost welcome it. Obviously, they don't want it to happen right away, but they almost welcome it. As if like that's when their life truly begins and they get to experience just beauty and peace and harmony 24 7 or there's no time up there it's just constant it's just constant love and and never any heartache and i mean once again for me it, it kind of always sounded like a fairy tale and i thought wow what a what a what a cute story but as i said the more i've learned about quantum physics and energy and um i mean it's it's pretty remarkable the correlations between religion and God you, you can say and uh, and the quantum field I mean it's it's pretty unbelievable actually and sorry for talking about stuff like this I hope it's not controversial um, I'd like to get people's opinions on how, how they feel about that by the way we're on Fox Farm Road now But yeah, that'll be enough out of me when it comes to to that stuff. I don't want to offend anybody. Definitely not. It's kind of sad that I have to say that. Because if if you believe something that someone else doesn't, they, they might get upset with you. And, and I think that that's really sad. We should all try to learn from other people's disagreements or their belief systems and try to apply anything that we can learn from other people into our own lives kind of take everything into consideration and then you know take what you think is valuable and store it in your tool of knowledge your toolbox of knowledge for, for the rest of your life I think honestly people that I've I disagree with the most in, it, in my life especially about politics and stuff like like I feel like they've taught me the most, you know. And I just hate seeing 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 people fighting about just stupid things like politics, like my goodness. You know, we need to all stick together and fight the government. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Government. But yeah, we we all need to stick together, love each other, take care of each other. That's the most important thing. I mean, life is hard enough without having these disagreements and without, you know, people hating you because you don't think in lockstep how they think. It, 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 it is really sad for me. I mean, I'm someone, for instance, uh, when I was younger, because I was ath like very athletic and um, basically, even though I'm a little guy, I was that kid always picked first for the sports teams, right? Always, like I was, I, I never had that feeling of being picked last. Um, and my whole point is I don't know what my my whole point it was because I started to get lost in watching the salt or whatever this is that he's spraying on the road to get rid of the, the ice it took my mind off of what I was saying oh yeah I was the I was the the, uh, the guy back in school who because of my athleticism I was very popular all the time every every year every, every school I went to um, I became popular because of my athleticism and contributing a lot to our to our school's winning ways at most of the schools that I went to. And so I was hanging out with a lot of the popular kids because I wanted to be liked. That was so important to me. I cared so much what other people thought, sadly. But what would, what I noticed that separated me from a lot of them at a young age is when they would bully other kids like 
like lots of times I know this is gonna sound so stupid you guys but I, I I would like sneak off or once I got home and would think about it I would start crying for those kids like it really bothered me it really bothered me I, I don't like seeing others being mean to people especially people who are helpless in those ways and and all of you know kids are so cruel especially with the social media today like I'm glad I didn't grow up with any social media but my gosh like if there's anything that I could ask each and every single one of you it's just no matter how someone else is treating you just try to think about maybe what they could could be going through at that very time always give people the benefit of the doubt i i really try to do that i really try my hardest to do that because yeah you never know what someone's going through when they're being really snappy with you or, or being really really mean we're going to turn left here on evergreen and i know i'm still human and i always not always but i do have my moments where i let other 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 people's attitudes get to me and then I respond in kind and it's not it's not the right thing to do like it's just it just causes negative energy for you and one one little thing that we allow to bother us can ruin our whole day and I I, I just wish that that we all could just completely get along and support each other you know, help each other grow in life, help each other move forward. And sorry, I'm sorry about this whole Dr. Phil stuff. Sometimes I do ramble on and stuff, but it's my channel and I'll ramble if I want to, ramble if I want to. Once again, I never started asking for subscribers or likes until just over a month ago, after eight years, you guys, because my, my wife and, and my mom convinced me for years to please ask people to subscribe and like your channel because you work really hard and it seems like they really do care about you just like I care about you guys and so I talk about what I want to talk about um, because it all comes from my heart whether people like it or not and you know it's not like my goal is ultimately to make a whole bunch of money and so if, if people want to watch, then I, that's so awesome. If they don't, because of some of the things I talk about, then that's awesome also. Obviously, as I said, in the past month and a half is when I've started making an effort to try to see where this channel can take my life in the future and take my wife with me too. Because if, if, if I could give her the best life humanly possible, that's what I want to do. But, uh, um, I like to talk about what I talk about, which is just random things all the time. Um, without trying to be, you know, um, just a people pleaser the whole time. Because I think honest conversations and what we are feeling from our heart and what we're talking about from our heart is truly important. I mean, very important. And I really hope everyone sticks around to watch and more and more people come to watch. But I know, unfortunately, just just because of some random things that I might talk about, some, some people might dislike me and just just have disdain for me because of, of just this conversation right now. And that hurts my feelings. It, it really does. I know I shouldn't care, but I have a big heart and I get hurt very easily. But I try to, as I said, follow my heart and share with you guys what I'm feeling. It's very important. And maybe by me talking honestly about things without an attitude behind it might help other people to have the courage to speak out their, their hearts to their heart's content and... Uh, I mean, I just love you guys so much. I love you guys so much. I want all of you to like me. I want all of you to care about me and want to be there for me and support me and and just, you know, put your arm around me when I'm down and just say, you know, everything's going to be okay, dude. Everything's going to be okay. 
and I want to be there for you guys in that same same way. You know, this channel is a lot different than it, than anything else I've seen on YouTube. I, it's I've seen just a lot of fraudulent stuff, a lot of people saying what they have to say to get likes or to get subscribers and stuff, and just the authenticity in this world has just gone away, and I. I really don't want to turn into that person, which is why, as I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm always going to be honest with you guys about who I am, how I feel about things. I will always answer your questions to the best of my ability and just show you guys the utmost respect that each and every single one of you deserve all the time. And thank you guys for being in my life. Thank you guys for sharing this, this journey with me. I am so blessed that you guys are in my life. And the only thing, or one of the major things is, is that with you guys in my life, my life can only be better. No matter what's going on, you guys have saved me. You guys have literally saved my life. And you guys have absolutely given me so much hope, so much, so much love, so much respect. I would do anything for you guys. You guys are my brothers and sisters. So thank you for listening to me. Real quick, we're just gonna pull up right here, take a look at the weather on the phone and see what it says. We are in one of the satellite parking lots for, for Bear Mountain and Snow Summit for the employees for the most part. This is where I used to park on the weekends when I worked at Bear. All right, so let's see here. I know, so it says 33 right here, right? So somewhere in town, it must be 30 because that's what it's saying. But look, we're gonna scroll here. So in the next 48 hours, we got an inch of snow, possibly. Let's scroll down a little bit. There's no one behind us, so don't worry. I'm not holding anybody up. Okay. Let's zoom it, zoom, zoom. And once again, thank you guys for listening to me. I know I can be very annoying sometimes. And I don't want to annoy you guys. I just want to be there for you guys and share with you guys who I am because my own siblings don't really care about me. And as much as I only want healthy, good people in my life, it, it's a horrible thing because we had a beautiful family and now it's just, just ripped apart. So let's see here. So we got nothing, nothing else going on from this storm. We hit it perfectly for the aftermath video, which is today, right now. And now let's take a look at what's going on on Tuesday. Okay, so look, you can see, let's see if there's, if, if there's, if there's going to be anything tonight. Nothing tonight, so let's scroll through. Okay, about one inch of snow expected tomorrow during the day. It's going to be a bit windy. Look, look at that low temperature, 9 degrees. And then the following day, 30 and 12. So for the next two and a half days after today, we're not going to be above freezing at all. And let's just scroll through and see if we can find any snow. And guys, by the way, this is the Weather Channel app. This has been the most reliable app of all the weather apps that I've used since I've lived here. Nothing has been as reliable. And as you can imagine, I've used all the apps that you could ever imagine. I've used them all. And uh, the only one that's been somewhat reliable is the Weather Channel app. And that's... And I'm just talking, just, that's for this area, you guys. So it might not be that reliable in, in other areas where, where you live. I'm just talking about for the Big Bear area, it's been shockingly really reliable for the most part. And what's weird to me is that we only use two, two weather forecasting systems, the European model and the US model. And so I don't know how so many different forecast centers can get it so wrong when it's we're all they're all using the same thing and then i just take their information and pass it along to you guys i'm not creating my own forecast or anything like that i get it from my weather channel app so anyway guys thanks again for hanging with me i love you guys a lot you guys mean everything to me you guys literally mean the world to me and as i said i am sorry for talking so much um but you guys are are my my brothers and sisters, I don't have many people I can talk to or who I would get that deep with. And uh, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. 
And uh, whatever I can do for you guys, please don't hesitate to ask me. I'm always here for you. It's February 13th, 2023 at 7.58 in the morning. If you guys enjoy what I do, please, please, please hit the like button. Please subscribe and share this with, with your friends and family who might like an honest weather type of a situation. Um, please hit the notification bell and just show your boy some love. I would appreciate it very much. And until next time, which will be, we're not going to do a calm before the next storm and my time lapse, I'm actually keeping it on right now through the, through this next system tomorrow. So it's going to be two little storms in one on the time lapse. We haven't had any good time lapses this season, guys, sadly. So hopefully uh, sometime before the season ends, we get a, you know, a foot of snow at some point so we can get a good time lapse. But in the meantime, once again, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the videos, share the channel, and uh, let's grow together. I'm excited to see where we end up in five years on, on this channel. I can't believe we're coming to the end of the eighth season doing Big Bear Weather. This is great, this is great. So thank you guys again for everything. I love you with all my heart. And don't hesitate to leave me comments, questions, anything you guys want. Because I love getting that from you guys. That's what makes me the happiest doing these videos nowadays. Is receiving all the communication with you guys. So, take care. Once again, I'm sorry I'm so annoying. It is February 13th, 2023 in Big Bear. I love you guys a lot. Melinda, I am so, so happy. I am so happy you're awake now. When we all thought that you had moved on to the next life. So that is freaking amazing. That's amazing. God bless you. And you know what? All of you take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.